May I invite Dr. Anish Chandarana to come up on the stage, please? He's the next speaker. Respected seniors, dear friends, at the outset, I would, uh, from bottom of my heart, thank Sri Kapadia Sahib, my friend Dr. Dhiran Shah, and all those who are involved in organizing this conference, and also would like to congratulate and compliment them for creating such a high level of awareness that it's not only medicine, it's not only angioplasty, it's not only bypass, but there are so many things which may be as powerful and as solid in prevention and treatment of heart disease. I don't have any conflict of interest except for the fact that, as was well said in last lecture, that I want to gather the happiness of sharing all those most important informations which I gathered through my reading, through my experience, and through my own personal life. Somebody asked me, Anis, what is uh, most important in your life after I delivered a lecture on fitness? And I said that fitness and happiness. Because fitness adds years to the life, and happiness adds life to the years. So this is very important. When previous president of US, Barack Obama, wrote a letter to Dr. Dean Ornish that what I should be taking care of while adopting strategies to improve cardiovascular health of Americans at that time, he wrote wonderfully well and which is so important for all of us. He said that what we eat, how much we exercise, whether or not we smoke, how we respond to stress, and the quality of our relationship and social support may be as powerful as drugs and surgery in treating and preventing heart disease. And he went further to so that, say that we don't have to wait for a new breakthrough in medicine or surgery. We just need to put into practice what we already know. So this is from somebody who is so learned and so knowledgeable. So diet, exercise, meditation, yoga, happiness, all these points are very, very important. And perhaps we as doctors are too much reliant on medicines and drugs. We are not ready to look into various other aspects which can help not only us but our patients also. If you look to the WHO data about preventable cause of death, you look here and they have said beautifully well that lack of physical activity is responsible for at least 2 million deaths a year. Lack of physical activity is directly responsible for death. And then there are so many other features, there are so many other features which which say that if you are not physically active, if you are not taking exercise, there is very high chance of death. So just People are not exercising, people are not ex physically active, leads to so many problems. There was a beautiful trial called as Interheart, done by Dr. Salim Yusuf. And what he said, nine modifiable risk factors account for 90% of the heart attack. So new taka heart attack, che, they are because of all this, smoking, lack of fruits and vegetable intakes, excess of alcohol, lack of exercise and physical inactivity, lack of social support and emotional relationship, stress, diabetes, hypertension, and lipids. So they said that 12% of first heart attack can be directly attributable to lack of exercise. Manso khali kasrat nathi karta, itle bartaka heart attack enthi aveshe. This is such an important science. So what is fitness? Fitness can be defined in various ways, but one important point is when your body systems are working well, mara haat, pag, kaan, aak, naak, stomach, intestine, badu barabar chale, to then I'm fit. So this is very basic and simple point, but somebody said a wonderful definition of physical fitness, and to me, it also encompasses the mental fitness. What is that? I can be said to be physically fit only if I can carry out my daily task with a lot of vigor, alertness without undue fatigue. If I'm a doctor working for 10 hours a day, I should be able to do that very happily with vigor, vitality, and energy. Second, and with ample energy to enjoy leisure time pursuits. free time sports, meditation, gardening, and yet I have mental and physical fitness to meet with unforeseen emergencies. Ratra Bevaga patient away, Topanu Dodin and a treat Karishakojo. This is to me a wonderful definition of fitness. There are so many other aspects which can be included in fitness. Chemke Mane Barabarung Hava Chekane, who exercise Karamat Prem, Keras Tarau Chukane, whether I feel fresh when I get up, whether I feel fresh throughout the day, whether my bowel habits are good or not, for female, whether menses are regular or not. There are so many things. But fitness to me depends on how do we deal with our body and mind on daily life. That's very, very important. How do I deal with body and mind? So what is exercise and what is physical activity? Physical activity is any bodily movement which leads to energy expenditure. Say, for example, I'm delivering a talk, 
At that time, I am moving my hands. So this is physical activity. Somebody is sitting, got up, went to the toilet, came back, it is physical activity. So physical activity is very, very important. The another point is exercise. Exercise is a more structured, repetitive physical activity. Say, for example, I design, so this is exercise. So exercise is more structured physical activity. But both of them are important. I have to have a spare time for exercise, and I have to be more physically active in my day-to-day -day life. Why physical activity in day-to-day -day life is important? This data came in 1953, British Journal of Internal Medicine, Ogunisone Trepanma. They studied the conductors and drivers of the city for 40 years. And the 40 years of the Susan Sotan Malu, that drivers has a risk of heart attack, which is three times more than conductors. A very important point, because conductors keep on moving, keep on walking, while drivers keep on sitting. So those who are conductors, movers, they have less risk of heart attack. And that is the importance of physical activity at working place. We know that when you do regular physical activity and exercise, there are a lot of benefits. It reduces my blood pressure. It optimizes my body weight. It improves my muscle and bone functions. It reduces platelet stickiness. It improves endothelial function. There is huge data available in the medical science. A very important point, Tamaramati Khana Averashe, in today's world, CRP, HSCRP is considered a very important inflammatory marker which suggests the risk of future cardiovascular event. Bhavishwa mane attack out se, stroke out se, maru heart ke stroke na kaane mrutyu thashe, e define karo maate ek HSCRP naam no test aavesh. If that test is high, if that test is high, my chance of heart attack and stroke is high. So they segregated the people based on their fitness. Those who were highly fit, those who were moderately fit, and those who were unfit. And they underwent HSCRP testing. What was found is those who were highly fit, their HSCRP level was less, while those who were unfit, their HSCRP level was high. So that suggests those who are unfit have a high risk of heart attack and stroke. So simple fitness defines a lot. Another important point, we believe that cholesterol is important, and it is important, no doubt. There is no question on this earth that cholesterol, serum cholesterol is important, but then it's not everything. There is another data in trial which said that there were people, they picked up the people whose cholesterol was well controlled. Their total cholesterol was less than 150 milligram and their LDL cholesterol was less than 75 milligram. So is that fine? I mean less than 75 LDL cholesterol for normal people is good. So they picked up these people whose cholesterols were controlled and they divided them into two parts, those who were unfit and those who were fit. So those who had normal cholesterols, but if they were unfit, the risk of heart attack and death was five times higher than those who were fit. So having cholesterol normal doesn't mean everything. Fitness counts more important than cholesterol. That was said in this study. This study said that out of all risk factors, fitness was the most important, and this study was published in a circulation, which is respected journal across the world. We all know that exercise improves HDL cholesterol. But it improves HDL cholesterol only in the people who are obese and only in the people who, whose triglycerides are high. HDL is something which is a gift of ancestors. It can't be modified much by exercise, but even little increase in HDL is good. If your exercise improves your HDL by 5 to 10 percent, but you know that 1 percent increase in HDL reduces risk of heart attack by 3 percent. So if my exercise improves my HDL by 5 percent, my risk of heart attack is reduced by 15 percent. And a very important point, when you do exercise on a regular basis, it does not alter LDL cholesterol and HDL cholesterol much, but it changes the size of particle of LDL and HDL. For those who are physicians here, those who are in other stream, science has found out that it's not only the level of LDL and level of HDL, but the variety of LDL and HDL that is also important for heart attack. So when you do regular exercise, it changes the variety of LDL and HDL from more harmful, from more heart attack giving to less harmful or more effective to give good health, and that was proven well. When you do regular exercise for years, in association with other risk factors modifications like stopping tobacco consumption, stopping excess of alcohol, taking care of diet and nutrition, you get small, small changes in all risk factors. Say, for example, I give you an example of my friend. He was 35 years. He was 35 years, and his weight was 82 kg. He was a doctor. Blood pressure was 146 by 94, mildly high. LDL cholesterol was high. HDL cholesterol was low. Glycated hemoglobin was marginally high. His HSCRP was high. 
He came to me, I explained about diet, nutrition, and exercise, and after three to six months, he came back to me, all the parameters were changed marginally. His blood pressure from 146.94 went down to 134.90. There was no big change in blood pressure. There was no big change in cholesterol. There was no big change in HDL. There was no big change in sugar. Everything got improved by five to seven percent. But if you put these figures into risk calculator, there are risk calculators available that what is your risk of heart attack and stroke in next 10 years. If you put the previous information into risk calculator, his risk of heart attack and death was 25%. But if you put these new features into this risk calculator, his risk of heart attack and death is only 5%. So risk of attack and stroke and death, which was 25%, came down to 5% only by diet control, exercise, and smoking cessation. So individual parameter may vary less. When you exercise, your weight may go down by three to four kg. You say, oh, I'm not getting any help. Don't worry. Your BP may reduce by two to four millimeter of mercury or six millimeter. Don't worry. But all these risk factors, when put together, it's not one plus one is two, but it's one plus one is 11. So that is the magic of exercise. It also does a lot of other things. It improves your muscle performance. It improves your lungs and heart stamina and endurance. It gives you a lot of good mobility and flexibility. It improves your neuromuscular coordination. If you want to live long and live happily with adequate physical fitness, exercise is very important. It improves your balance and posture. And there are a lot of benefits of weight loss and physical activity described across the body, starting from head to toe. It improves your risk of arthritis. It improves your bone and muscle health. It reduces risk of gallstone. It reduces risk of cancer. It reduces risk of heart attack and stroke. So a lot of things. But the most important point is I need to do exercise. And that's very, very important. Now, there are two kinds of exercise, two kinds of exercise. One is, which we used to say is cardio or aerobic. Tamaradi Ghanalok was a term janta say aerobic exercise or cardio exercise. Now, a new and more comprehensive term has been coined that is called as endurance exercise. What are those exercises? Walking, jogging, running, swimming, cycling, all this is endurance exercise in which tamara pulse vathe, Tamaru blood pressure thodu vade, tamaru respiration vade. So this exercise stretches your cardio respiratory system. And this exercise is very, very important to be done on a daily basis. What is most important is when you walk or jog, you should have a good pair of shoes to prevent injury to bone and muscle. And there are charts available which kind of exercise leads to which kind of calorie burning. So you can adjust to those charts. Another important point is one can decide what is my level of fitness as far as heart, lungs are concerned, as far as bone and muscles are concerned, and one can choose the exercise. There is another form of exercise which we used to say anaerobic exercise. Now there is nothing like anaerobic exercise. Every exercise has to be aerobic. There has to be adequate amount of oxygenation going inside. So that is called as resistant training or strength training exercise. And WHO, American College of Cardiology, all have made it compulsory that you should be doing at least two to three times a week, 30 to 40 minutes. Muscle building is just for the look. Muscle building is extremely important from so many perspective. Your muscles are the largest waste basket of your body. Whatever toxins which you eat on diet, whatever toxins which are produced in body, if you've got more muscle mass, they'll be better absorbed and they will affect you negatively very less. In India, there is high risk of cardiovascular and metabolic disease. What are the reasons? One is, yes, we know that genes are important, but we cannot keep crying on genes. My genes are genes and I cannot change them. But then it is environment, lifestyle, which has harassed us. If you look to the Indians who have cardiovascular and metabolic disease, many of them are not really those heavily obese. But a term which has been coined for Indian is thin, lean, fatty Indian. What does it mean? An Indian may be of 50 kg weight, five feet, six inch height, looks very thin. But if you look to the body proportion, his muscle and bone are less and body proportion and percentage of fat is high. And that body percentage of fat, that visceral fat, is a killer. And that can be reduced in proportion by both the exercise, but weight training or resistance training is extremely important. When you start resistance training, it's important to undergo a health checkup and start doing it under supervision because it is something where if you don't know well and don't do well, you can injure yourself. Those who do not want to feature into aerobic, anaerobic, endurance, strengthening exercise, they can go to ancient Indian system of yoga, pranayam, asanas. And then there are so many yoga asanas which can include everything. Say, for example, Surya Namaskar. It combines everything. It includes 
cardio exercise, it includes resistance training, it includes breathing exercise, it includes stretching, and it includes also abs exercise. So Surya Namaskar is such a comprehensive exercise that if you start doing on a regular base, you need not do anything else and you can keep doing that. So what is the regime of exercise for an Indian? We need to exercise 50 to 70 minutes a day. Make sure that it is regular five to six times a week. Divide your time into five different types of exercise. One is cardio, that is walking, jogging, running, cycling, swimming, et cetera, gardening. Resistant training, weight training at least two to three days a week. You have to do something for your abdomen because tummy comes up for almost everybody in India after the age of 30. So should be doing floor exercise, should be doing twisting, etc. You should be doing stretching on a regular base. Otherwise your bone gets hard, your bones get brittle and then you lose the flexibility and you should be doing breathing exercise on a regular base. You should be doing at moderate intensity. That depends on individual, that what is your level of fitness. Another important point, people say that I don't have a time at a stretch for 60 minutes. Can I do in bouts? I have 15 minutes now, I do exercise. Then in the evening I would have 15 minutes. The science has enough data that whatever exercise you do in 10, 10 minutes, it all together works as one hour complete. So don't hesitate any time. Even if you have 10 minutes, keep walking. If you have five minutes, do something. Any time invested in exercise counts for your fitness and health, everything. You can exercise 10 minutes five times a day, it works like 50 minutes of exercise. So that's very important. When you start a regular exercise, warm up and cool down is important. Adequate hydration is important. When you start exercise, your stomach should not be totally empty, nor it should be too full. There are certain warning signs which you need to understand. When you exercise, you need to understand there are certain signs where you have to stop. Suppose tamne bahu swas chade, suppose mathu dukhwa mande, suppose aake andhara ke chakkar aave, disproportionate perspiration thai, disproportionate swas chade, so then you have to stop, this is warning sign. And don't do exercise when you are ill, because in illness, exercising can, can harass you. A wonderful data came that sitting is another smoking. The data said that sitting increases your risk of death, heart attack and stroke in dose dependent manner. If you sit for two hours a day, your risk of heart attack is there. If you sit for four hours, risk doubles. If you sit for six, sit for six hours, your risk doubles. So sitting increases risk of heart attack in a dose-dependent manner. So easiest form of exercise is stand up. Standing is the easiest exercise. So those who stand for at least two hours, they are doing something to reduce their risk of heart attack. So this is all data and science. Another important, people do ask a question that should I do vigorous exercise to help myself? No, the answer is no. If you do vigorous exercise, you are young, fine. But if you are totally inactive, from that, if you become moderately active, most of the benefits are achieved. If you are totally inactive, you start walking four kilometers a day, three and a half kilometers a day, and then most of the benefit is achieved. For those who are enthu, if they keep on increasing exercise, they will get additional benefit, no doubt, but the additional benefit is small. So that is quite reassuring that from totally being inactive, if you become mild to moderately active, you get almost all benefits. So those who are senior citizens, those who do not have time, there, there is a big reassurance for themselves, okay, fine. I have been talking about exercise for primary prevention and exercise in healthy people, but even exercise in people who already heart disease has shown that those who do moderate, mild to moderate exercise, they get tremendous benefit. There are important questions of exercise which I have answered. There has been good data. I have not gone into too many of trials, but trials do say that. If you want to prevent, say for example, this trial said if you want to prevent diabetes, they accepted three ways. One is people were said to go for lifestyle modification. Then people were given a medicine which can prevent diabetes. And then people were given a placebo. And what was found is lifestyle modification was the most effective tool to reduce the risk of diabetes, more effective than medicine. So we have plenty of data that lifestyle helps a lot. But the most important point is, every morning my brain tells me to exercise and my body laughs at Chodo. No, it should be a habit on a regular base. Exercise can make a lot of wonders for you. It doesn't only improve your heart, lung, bones, and muscle, but it gives you tremendous energy and strength. A person who does regular exercise versus a person who doesn't do regular exercise, his body language will be different, his posture will be different, his happiness will be different. Exercise is a big stress buster. You do exercise and tell me after one year that you will feel that I am able to tackle my stress better. Exercise makes you sleep better. Exercise also makes you look good. There are so many youngsters here. You will look better. 
and it improves your self-confidence. Your presence in the society, your presence in this world, you will be doing with more confidence. Alone exercise is not enough. You have to have a good nutrition. And there, is, there has been a lot of data, but I'll just produce one slide. Mediterranean diet, which is quite traditional Gujarati diet, quite traditional, which has high amount of anaj, kathol, legumes, cereals, good amount of fruits and nuts, badam, pista, karod, good amount of vegetables. Those who are fish eaters, good amount of fish. Taking good fat. See, people got somewhere miss up. Good fat is good for life. And what is good fat? Badam pista krot is a good fat. Fish is a good fat. So you need to take those who take alcohol, moderation of alcohol, low meat and meat products, low dairy products. When you do this, in association with all those ancient Indian things like ginger, turmeric, fenugreek, clove, cardamom, and if you create a diet, that can help you a lot. Smoking is more dangerous than Osama bin Laden. More dangerous. People put their entire attention to kill terrorists. Yes, terrorists should be killed. But to me, the biggest terrorist of mankind is smoking. So it's very, very important. Not only we do that for ourselves, our families, but we have to keep working to change the habits and behavior of society. Because that is something, if we can do that, will help the society to a great extent. A lot of things have been said about alcohol. But one thing which I'll say that in Indian population, there is no medical ground to promote alcohol as a healthy way of life. There is no data. Even in the world, there is no randomized controlled trials to say that alcohol helps the life. They were only observational data obtained from retrospect analysis of various registries that people who took alcohol in moderation, they had some better aspects. But there is no randomized control style. So people cannot say that. Those who do take alcohol because of some reasons, moderation is very important. But moderation is such a slippery slope that very few people can navigate it well. So that's why alcohol should be avoided by all means. Sleep is very important. Fitness is not achieved unless sleep is good. Quality of sleep and quantity of sleep. There is good data which says if you sleep less than five hours or if you sleep more than eight hours, the risk to heart attack and stroke is high. So five to eight hours is something which is quite personal. I mean, I cannot say that the thumb of rule is six hours, eight hours. Depends on your activity, age, your mindset, etc., etc. But it's very important. And prayer before sleeping is something which can ease your mind. Not seeing television after 8 p.m., not attending mobile phones, not going to social media after 8 p.m., they all help you to get a better sleep. In today's world, social media is something which is a serious harassment. And that's why after 8, you have to start something which cools your brain. There are so many killers of mind which have been well discussed in previous lecture, but unless I discuss this, fitness is not complete. That's why. And there are so many supporters of mind. Meditation is wonderful, but then there are so many things which support mind. Humor, music, reading, creativity, gardening, so that you can create a wonderful mind. So coming to conclusion, dear friends, let us make a choice. It was well said in previous lecture that to be happy is a choice. To do regular exercise is a choice. And there is terrific capacity with the human minds. There is terrific capacity. It's only we do not trust that. Let me tell you, those who made a choice to come here in this conference are sitting in this room. Those who made a choice that Sunday morning mare santi te daswage uthu chen kei conference manati jau, they are at home. Those who made a choice to go for shopping to some mall, they have gone to shopping. So what you made a choice, you are doing. You all are sitting here because you made a choice. So there is tremendous power in your mind, tremendous power in your choice. So make a choice that I want to exercise 60 minutes a day. That's it, no go. Make a timetable. It is quite unfortunate. Most of the doctors do not have a good timetable, particularly when they are very active in their life. Do exercise when your stomach is neither full nor empty. Don't do exercise when you're ill. Good shoes is important. That's where you have to invest. Otherwise, you can injure your muscles and bones and comfortable clothes. You can make friend circle and you can do exercise. You can promote. You can listen to music or something at that time. Take adequate water or some juice while doing exercise so that you are not dehydrated. Your electrolytes are maintained. Warm up and cool down is very important. Now, one important point to assess the intensity of exercise is talk test. What is talk test? When you walk, when you do any kind of exercise, talk to your friend. If you can talk the way I am talking, if you can talk very happily without an inhibition, then you are underperforming. If you talk and you are not able to, <laughs> then perhaps you are overperforming. So do a talk test and you can judge the intensity. Divide your exercise into all elements. Single exercise doesn't give you the perfect fitness. There are people who do only cardio. It's good. 
Rather than doing nothing, it's good to do cardio, but you have to have resistant training two to three times a week. You have to have, you have to have stretching. You have to have some exercise to keep your stomach flat and you should be doing pranayama. Love exercise and feel happy. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you so much, sir.